everybody, Thrifty Teresa here. I wanted to do a little video today talking about using Etsy's um, variations on your listing and how that can be beneficial to you if you are a vintage seller. And what I mean by variations is this. Um, for example, in the handmade community, uh, you're looking at an item here and this person offers multiple colors and styles for the item that she is selling. So she has set up variations so that the customer can select a color of what they want to purchase. That's great uh, if the item that you are selling, if you have multiples of it, if it comes in different styles or whatnot, uh, that's great. But as a vintage seller, I sell one-offs one-of-a-kind things or hard-to-find things or out-of-print things and you know I, I only have the one item but I can use these variations in order to make sure that my customer has read my listing specifically if I want to point out that something has been damaged. Uh, you might remember a while back in a sales video I sold this set of duck coasters and I put here in the description that they were very dirty and stained. I had it in big letters in my description that these coasters are very dirty on the front and the back and some of them had tears and cuts in them. I tried to take detailed photos showing the damage that I was talking about, big nicks and cuts on these things. And the reason that I listed them is because this, you know, Pimpernel coasters are highly collectible. And also, even though these are dirty and stained, somebody may still want them either for their coaster collection or if they're a duck enthusiast or something. If, you know, there's a couple of the coasters that were still in nice condition, they could keep those and toss the others away. Or uh, they... There's so many crafty people that can reuse these for other reasons. So when the customer bought these, before I shipped the item, I had sent her an email saying, yo, I just want to make sure that you read the listing and saw the pictures, that these are in rough condition and everything. And she wrote back saying, yeah, no problem, it's great. Um, and then when she received them, she actually left me really nice feedback. Um, saying, well actually she didn't leave me feedback, but she sent me another message saying that when she got the coasters she was actually really happy with the condition that they were in and for whatever purpose she was going to use them for that they were still in um, good condition so she was still going to be able to use them. So, you know, it, it was a good sale, it worked out. But we all know that uh, when people are shopping online they don't always read important things. They may not read that these items are dirty and stained because I might not put it in my title and who knows if they're going to read the full description. Some people's descriptions on Etsy are so nuts where it'll have like one line of what the thing is and then they'll have like eight paragraphs with like your shipping policies and all this stuff on it. And frankly, as a buyer, I don't always read those. But if there's something important that they need to know like maybe you are a handmade seller and your shipping policies state that it's going to take one to two weeks before you're even going to ship this people may not notice that because they may not click on that tab it may not be obvious to them so then they buy it and then they're confused why hasn't this shipped yet um, and then you might get into a difficult situation with an unhappy customer so I want to use these variations to point out to my customers that some of my items, because they're vintage and they're old, they may be flawed. Um, I've recently listed a whole gang of playing cards. I came into a big lot of playing cards. A lot of them were gorgeous, but a lot of them were dirty. Now, so these Canasta cards here, you can see they're bright and colorful on the front, but the cards themselves are quite yellow, uh, you know, quite aged, and, you know, they may not be beautiful to the person who's buying it. So especially if somebody is buying a gift, I want them to know that these cards are discolored. So I take the photos, of course, and I mention it in the description that, um, 
the cards are very discolored and very used. They are very old, um, you know, and then the case also has damage, that kind of stuff. I've started adding these variations. Over here you can see it says that the cards are discolored. And it, the customer has to select, I understand, and I'm going to buy it, or yuck, and that means don't buy it. So if somebody is looking at this item and they want to buy it and they click add to cart, it's going to say, well, here it says I can't buy my own items. But if I was somebody else, it would actually say, whoa, you have to select an option. So it forces the customer to come back here and read this thing that says the cards are discolored and that I need to choose that I understand and that I want to buy these items. Um, Earlier today, um, somebody just bought this uh, set of cards, and this set of cards have two uh, single cards which had some damage. This uh, squirrel card was bent, uh, this raccoon card had a little nick on it, so of course I wrote that in the description, but I needed the customer to be aware of that. When the customer purchased the item, we can see on the order page where I wrote two cards have damage, and the customer selected I am understand. So now that's saving me a step. I don't have to email the customer and say, yo, are you sure you want these cards because they're damaged? There's a couple that are damaged. They've already figured that out. <laughs> They've already been told that the cards are damaged and they have chosen I understand. So they know when they receive them there might be a couple that are flawed. So how do we add these to the listing? Um, this is a draft of another deck of cards that I haven't listed yet. So let's go ahead and edit this. And, um, oh, this is going, this is all lopsided here. I don't know if I can move this window. Oh, okay. Well, maybe that works. I hope we can still see this. So I've got these, uh, this set of canasta cards with these birds on them. Uh, we can see in one of the pictures here that the cards are a little, you know, they're a little worn on the edges and stuff like that, uh, slightly on the uh, discolored side. So where I go is down here underneath where we write the description, we have variations. So you've got all these opportunities to select these different variations. Let me bring that up a little. There we go. All these variations that mostly people use with um, the handmade community, uh, fabric and finish and length and material and things like that. But they've got one here where if you add a new property, I can type whatever I want. Now. It is limited. You could only type up to 20 characters. So I've been doing things such as uh, stained slash discolored, or if you know if it's a, a cup. Say it's like a, a coffee mug, and it's got a chip in it. So I could put chip in the rim. You know, something like that. And then you hit continue, and it adds that variation. So now you need to have the options for your variation. So what do you want your customer select? Um, I've been using basic terms like I understand, meaning there's a chip in the rim. I understand. I'm going to buy it. So I do I understand. I put it in parentheses buy with exclamation point. Um, again, this little area, you can only type into 20 characters. So I will add, I understand, and I'm going to buy it. Or I will say, no thanks. And then I put, don't buy. You know, I think it would be pretty self-explanatory for that person and be like, oh, it's chipped, no thanks. They're not going to then buy it. If I ever were to see that on the receipt, <laughs> such as this, if I were to see that on the receipt that somebody chose no, or um, another thing that I type in there instead of no thanks, like if I say the cards are dirty and stained, I'll be like, yuck, don't buy. <laughs> if somebody were to choose the yuck, don't buy option, and then actually place the order, I'm going to go back to that person and send them a message before I ship the item to confirm do you want these stained, dirty, old, vintage playing cards or not? 
Um, so it's just a, a, a little time saver, but also um, another way to get your message out when we all know that sometimes when we're shopping online, we don't always read everything that we should read. And then we might come up with a situation where we're not necessarily happy with the item that arrived. So um, that's what I've been doing lately. Uh, I got a whole mess of vintage playing cards that I am uh, listing. Uh, my shop, uh, Thrifty Teresa, is currently overrun with vintage playing cards, and I've actually started listing more on my Scrappy Teresa Etsy shop, where I was selling the uh, the single cards, like one, two, three cards at a time, for a couple bucks. Um, I've started listing full decks of playing cards on that shop as well so <laughs> I've, I've got more um, playing cards than I can uh, shake a stick at but it's a lot of fun it's one of my favorite items to sell but of course a lot of these cards come damaged some of these sets come incomplete but some people may still want them they may want to use them as a craft supply or for other needs so I want them to know if there's anything wrong with the item I'm gonna put in a variation so that they understand you know the cup has a chip in it, the playing cards are dirty, I want the customer to know what they're getting before they get it. And then, you know, mystery solved. So that's what I got for you guys today. I hope everybody is having a very uh, thrifty holiday. I hope everybody is getting a whole bunch of sales. Um, I've been doing okay. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. So uh, talk to you guys later. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye.